Hi, I recently watched this interesting discussion between Avi and Benjamin about uh, the Gardasil vaccine and uh, the safety of vaccines. And I engaged Avi um, with a little bit of uh, a challenge. And we'll go back into that later. First, I'd like to talk about this um, doctor, Dr. Andrew Wakefield. Um, I'm sure you've probably heard of him. <laughs> um, yeah, there's an interesting uh, counter story to the mass media um, on this site here, in this together. Um, I'm not going to go into this too deeply. Um, the reason why I mention it is, well, hey, look at this doctor. Look what happened to him um, when he was critical of the uh, vaccine uh, safety claims that uh, most people believe, or many people believe, that vaccines are safe. Um, it's a mantra in the medical profession, particularly. Um, well, I mean, look what happened to this guy. His uh, reputation and career were ruined um, through um, claims that really weren't that radical. Um, and you can see the details on, in this article um, that I've put on the screen. Um, and that's problematic for anyone that's sceptical um, about uh, discussion, having a, an impartial discussion about a topic. Um, seeing uh, people with particular um, information get destroyed like this is very problematic. I mean, this is a witch hunt. Um, it's, it's, I mean, it's like he had gone into uh, a mosque and torn up a Koran and taken a dump on it. I mean, it's incredible. It's like uh, he's unleashed uh, religious uh, fanaticism within um, the media and I think within the uh, medical community as well. Um, and you can't possibly have uh, an impartial and um, neutral um, discussion of the topic with this kind of thing going on. It's, it's the gun in the room. It's, um, it's going to spoil the discussion. And uh, particularly, you know, if you're debating the issue with a doctor, well, they, they've got this sort of Damocles hanging over them of, of this example of what happens when you, you challenge the dogma. Um, and this is um, the kind of thing that you, you, you would expect to find, like I say, in some kind of religious cult. Um, it's the kind of thing we saw in science, um, or in, in science as it evolved uh, centuries ago and, and challenged uh, religious dogma. And it, it doesn't deserve any place in uh, sensible and uh, objective uh, discussion. And it certainly doesn't deserve any space in a scholarly um, field. So, uh, I, you know, I'm pointing out here that medicine, at least in my eyes, um, is looking bad for this. It's looking very bad. So, um, let's go back to the video. Um, okay. Um, so, it, it's kind of divided roughly into three portions. In the first portion, um, Avi talks about uh, the evidence for vaccine safety, specifically, I think, the Gardasil vaccine. And uh, then that, that occupies, I guess, about the first third of the video. And then um, I think the next sort of uh, perhaps um, you know, the middle section of the video is about, well, what, what is vaccine safety? What, what's your criteria um, for having a s consistent view on what we would consider safe? Um, and that, that goes on for quite a while. And um, most of the time, Benjamin doesn't seem to be engaging much in the, the discussion, and Avi talks a lot. Um, but anyway, I, I sent this article um, or an extract from it to, to Avi, and he kindly uh, replied. And the, the first third of, of Avi's presentation, if you like, is his case that um, the vaccine's safe because there is no uh, statistical association with adverse reactions and the administration of the vaccines. Um, now, my article, my critique of that is, is from Nature, 
um, and uh, a lot of scientists, I think it's uh, more than 800 signatories, have said that um, you, you can't uh, confirm or deny a, a scientific hypothesis based on statistical significance. A and they're quite strong in this. They say, we agree and call for the entire concept of statistical significance to be abandoned. Um, and then later on, uh, they point out, as I've just said, that uh, rather and in line with many others over the decades, we are calling for a stop to the use of p-values in, in the conventional dichotomous way to decide whether a result refutes or supports a scientific hypothesis. So that's my scientific criticism um, of Avi's argument um, that vaccines are safe. Now he says, well, uh, he's aware of this. And then he says there are legitimate arguments on both sides of this coin. Now he doesn't present those arguments um, in his response. Uh, he, he doesn't um, do me the service that I did for him of providing uh, a quotation or citation. So he, he's claiming that this, this argument is somewhere else, that someone else has made it perhaps. And I mean, that's 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 like saying, um, I mean, in, in terms of scholarly discourse, that's like saying your, your dog ate your, your homework. I mean, that's, that's just not an acceptable reply. Um, and they said, well, it's not relevant because the data is compelling. But I mean, the whole point is, of what I'm saying, is that if the method is defective, um, the method you're using to interpret the data is defective, then you can't, uh, uh, data doesn't stand on its own merits. It has to be interpreted. Um, so if your method of interpretation is, is defective, um, then, well, that's it. It's no good. Um, so I, I, then I challenge him and say, well, okay, well, what's this evidence? And then he kind of backtracks and says, well, okay, um, statistical significance is, design is not designed to, to prove a hypothesis. Well, of course, that's rather the point that I'm uh, making. And then he kindly invites me to a further discussion. Um, and then, of course, I point out, well, OK, if, if statistics don't, um, aren't, can't be used to, to uh, support your hypothesis, then why do you do it? Because that's, that's what he does in the first third of his video. So um, yeah, I'd like to see a proper reply to that, um, and, and of a similar quality to the one I provided, uh, not some kind of uh, summary, um, oh yeah, well, I've got stuff elsewhere, that, that's not acceptable. So, um, let's move on a bit from this um, to the next section of the video. And it's important to point out that there's kind of a limitation here um, when we talk about the safety of medicines. Um, so, if there isn't any evidence of a drug being dangerous, it doesn't follow um, that the drug is safe. Um, and this is, this is kind of an axiomatic problem with any time you're trying to prove something like safety. You can't use the absence of evidence. You have to um, do some research. And clearly, I mean, obviously, there are vaccine studies um, that, uh, that attempt to, to answer this question and, and find evidence. Um, anyway, uh, here's the article about um, use of statistics, and you can see that right there. I'm just putting that up so you can uh, confirm and see what my source is. So there you go. Um, so the next section of Avi's presentation um, is about safety. And he kind of tries to challenge um, Benjamin to, to come up with a consistent uh, viewpoint on, on what would constitute safety and, you know, so be rational about it, be logically consistent in the way you apply it. And then Avi refers to other drugs, other pharmaceutical preparations, and says, well, um, vaccines are safer than other medicines. Um, but uh, this is a bit odd to me because um, prescription drugs are <laughs> really dangerous. I mean, if you're, if you're going to claim that something's safe, 
then why would you why would you compare to something as dangerous as um, medicines? You know, a, a few grams of most medicines will probably kill you or at least put you in hospital. They're very dangerous, um, and you know, obviously they have warnings on them. You keep them away from children, preferably in a locked cupboard, and so on and so forth. Um, and there's some information here which you can you can have a look at um, at your leisure. So I'm not really sure why why you would uh, want to compare um, vaccines to prescription drugs. It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, you'd want to have some other kind of, of standard to compare to. So, I mean, what's out there elsewhere in terms of um, safety? Well, let's look at airliners, for example. What would we consider um, a safe airplane for passengers to go on? Um, Okay, let's just highlight this. So when we're talking about safety of uh, commercial airliners, uh, you can see the numbers here are, are pretty incredible. Um, one to the, the catastrophic failure with a chance of one per 10 to the minus nine flying hours. Um, that, that's what we consider to be safe um, in other areas of, of discussion on uh, public safety and the safety of... of um, things like, um, in this case, uh, mechanical devices. Um, so I, I think if you're going to make um, a claim for the safety of vaccines, you, you shouldn't base it on a comparison to pharmaceutical drugs. You might want to look a bit wider, um, further afield at um, engineering disciplines for some kind of um, standard or gold standard. And you'll see that um, in engineering, uh, the standard, the bar is very high before you can claim something is safe and expect people to, to accept it to be so. Um, so there you go, that's, that's airline, airliners. Um, so let's look at another example um, in the next tab. Brave is being peculiarly unresponsive. Um, oh, okay, hold on, here we are. Machine design. So let's look at medical devices because that, that is perhaps a bit closer to the um, to the drug case. Um, I have a nice chart here. So um, as far as I'm aware, adverse reactions in vaccines are reportedly around one in a million. Um, and you might think, well, yeah, that's pretty safe. That's pretty safe. Uh, but um, I, I would I would challenge that. We've, we've just talked about aircraft. Now, what this um, site here claims I is that uh, the severity of the damage, but for the more severe degree of damage, um, the d the uh, prob we need to keep the probability very low. Um, of the damage happening. And they talk about here keeping the risk below the major diagonal. Um, so that means outside of the red and uh, on this chart. And vaccines with their one in a million, if that's to be believed, if, if, if it's one per million doses that have a severe adverse reaction. Um, I don't personally believe that and I don't think Abby's made the case for this. Um, that would put vaccines in the red square here um, so highly severe damage for um, 10 to the minus 6 is a um, class 3 um, probability of occurrence. Um, so it's in the red. So, I mean, using medical devices as your standard for safety, and this little chart here, um, we would say that uh, vaccines are not safe. Now, the interesting thing about um, this particular chart, if you look down further into it, is they say that uh, for medical devices, um, the bar is relatively low compared to, for example, airliners, um, because, of course, one medical device failure is only going to kill one person at a time. You know, you could have a medical device fail on one bed, and then there could be somebody in the next bed and they could have exactly the same device and it doesn't fail and um, it's, it's not a problem, um, not a really big problem. But of course vaccines are not discrete, um, not discrete uh, things. They are a batch, they are a chemical that is consistent 
Um, so there, there isn't really this, like unlike the machines, you're not going to get a single um, one of the vaccine administrations, one shot, um, being wrong in its own right or failing in its own right. It's the whole thing, the whole batch um, that is either uh, in fault or not. And that could affect millions of people, uh, if not more, um, many more. So the, the standard for vaccines should actually be um, in the probability of occurrences of adverse reactions or severe outcomes. It should probably be a category one down here, 10 to the minus eight, 10 to the minus nine, which is on a, on a par with um, airliners. Um, so yeah, I'm making that argument. I'm happy to hear any, anybody disagree with me on that. Um, and finally, uh, a, there was some discussion at the end of the presentation about um, well, how big a sample do you need to prove that something's safe? Well, if we put aside the methodological problems with using statistical um, significance as your evidence of safety, we put that aside. Uh, these vaccine studies uh, involve thousands of people, you know, 10,000, 5,000, whatever, something like that. Now, there are nearly 8 billion humans um, on the planet. And the immune system I I is uh, kind of unusual. Uh, it's not like the rest of our genetic makeup. Um, it, it has this characteristic called somatic hypermutation uh, because it has to keep up with uh, pathogens. So it has to be um, very m capable of, of mutating and adapting to um, new pathogens. And what that means is that everyone is really a I mean, this is my interpretation. I'm, I'm not a microbiologist and I'm not an expert in uh, this field. But it, it, the upshot of this is that we are we all immunologically unique um, beings. Um, so you, you can't really have a representative um, sample of the human population. Um, or not easily anyway, you'd probably need a huge sample, I mean uh, millions and millions of people. Um, could be wrong, um, I'd like to hear the argument against that, I believe Abby will probably have something to say about that. Um, but again, I, you know, I'm sceptical that if you take 5,000 and 10,000 people, um, you're in, in any way going to, to really have a chance of um, finding these possible um, edge cases, these, these um, you know, one in a million, or whatever they are, one in ten million, um, you possibly are not going to discover those with five to ten thousand people. You're going to have to keep repeating, I think, you're going to have to do um, that experiment with, new s with a lot of uh, different samples all over the world, and, and many times I mean, for example, um, you know, if you did a vaccine trial on four billion people, you know, half the population of the planet, more than half, um, and then you found no adverse reactions in, in that sample, then yeah, okay, you, you've got a, you've got something of a compelling case. But uh, I don't know. There's a there, there has to be a point there somewhere. But um, uh, nobody seemed to be making it or specifying what it is or giving the reasons. So I think it'd be worth um, digging in and exploring that a bit further. Um, anyway, that's that's my uh, critique, um, and uh, be very interested to hear what other people have to say. So thanks for listening. <laughs>